But until we do, these people are still a part of that system and that makes them our enemy. You have to understand, most of these people are not ready to... And many of them are so inert, so hopelessly dependent on the system that they will fight to protect it. Are you sure? I'll go. They're watching you, Neo. Who is? Please just listen. I know why you're here, Neo. I know what you've been doing. I know why you hardly sleep. Why you live alone and why night after night you sit at your computer. I'm right, going to uh, st <coughs> start off with, uh, with something else now. You know, leading on from uh, Edwin's, Edward Snowden's uh, case, you know, about the... Uh, you know, like, uh, it was called the Global Surveillance Program, right? Where this dude leaked, uh, which is NSA, GCHQ involved. Basically, you know, it was actually in The Guardian, which I believe, I'm not sure about other, new, you know, media and that, or what it was, uh, you know, put across as compared to The Guardian. As I said, uh, The Guardian's non-biased views, you know, that's just straight up facts, no opinions involved as far as I see. Uh, you know, so I'm not sure about the other, you know, mainstream. I mean, but what I've gone from this right is uh, what I'll start off with. Um, let me just stay in this track. You know, like a global surveillance program, which I discover what it is, and basically, you know, it was illegal spying and that. You know, uh, on on many countries of the world, you know, without people realizing and. This is where it came along to, you know. Uh, basically, they were doing it without anyone's permission. I mean, I don't know about uh, spying on foreign soil. You know, basically spying on countries without their permission. And where that leads down to. Uh, but, you know, I do know and I did see, as I said, uh, China were one of the uh, countries who were being spied on, basically, you know. And that, I know I know through that, you know, basically to know especially with this conflict where China to be involved in this upcoming war basically um, there's a lot of things that I already know generally that you know China being spied on was already illegal on that part of the NSA who were mainly doing it uh, I know something to do with China they actually block off uh, Facebook I think they have Facebook blocked because it's something to do with the USA for starters, you know, and I'm not sure the full story beyond that, but leading on from where Edward Snowden was saying that Facebook are actually part of, uh, you know, they're part of this, uh, basically they're part of uh, this um, global surveillance, surveillance program, uh, part of uh, many websites. So I don't know if, even if that's to do with that and China suspected that, which is why it's blocked, you know. There's a lot of reasons, but, you know, if you do your research after hearing this recording, you will find out when they were spying on China, they were basically hacking into their systems, you know, illegally. And, you know, I'll refer back to this, uh, which I know is the Terrorism Act of uh, the UK, the Terror Act 2000, it's a law. And, you know, ironically, from that, what I was saying, you know, that this law was laying down, you know, part of the Terror Act, is basically hacking, you know, computer hacking or hacking electronic systems is against the law. I know that's the Terror Act of 2000, a UK law, in which GCHQ uh, is uh, basically secret surveillance, uh, you know, like part of a secret service. So therefore, if they were hacking China, they basically were, you know, breaking the law for starters, doing that, because that's what they class as terrorism in the UK, Terror Act 2000. So, you know, that doesn't make sense for starters. Uh, you know, what I'll lead on from this, though. I'll, I'll just leave the brief points about it. You know, from that, you know, the, that's just uh, making them hypocritical and not showing you who the criminals are. You know, when GCHQ's involvement with the N uh, NSA, uh, who are the main people. Uh, you know, from that, that's all I say. And, you know... I was saying this earlier, but I'll leave on this recording about, you know, about um, when it comes to uh, things like, uh, hold on, let me stop, uh, where I left off basically, you know, on this um, 
you know that they were, they were basically illegally spying on China for status, which is illegal anyway. And uh, you know what was going along with, uh, you know, another ironic thing they said and how they complained about, you know, like, uh, which I suspect they were doing too as well, uh, North Korea, right? With North, North Korea, if you saw it in the news, do your research and that, you know, basically North Korea were accused, as it was said, uh, I saw myself for uh, hacking uh, Sony America, right? And uh, basically they kicked up a big stink about it and said this and that and it's illegal and everything, you know, they made a big, big thing out of it. And, you know, it's hypocritical because, you know, you, I can guarantee if they were illegally spying on China, it means they were doing the same to North Korea. And, you know, North Korea are near enough the same as China, you know, so I guarantee spying that on North Korea was illegal, especially when you see the conflicts and stuff. You know, like not not many a couple of years ago, there was that thing where they were saying King John Young was uh, going to f- fire nuclear things or something like that. You know, you can see that any America's been trying to disarm North Korea of their nuclear power, which I said about you know to basically take away their self defences of this upcoming war, which makes it more obvious about a war, war going to start anyway, World War Three. But, you know, as I said, referring back to how, how they kicked, a, kicked up a big storm about uh, North Korea hacking Sony America, uh, accusing them. And, you know, it's a bit hypocritical, you know, when Edward Snowden leaked a lot of stuff to say, you know, proof to the Guardian and that, you know, that they're actually spying illegally on other countries. Hack it, basically, it's hacking, you know, hacking their systems, you know hacking for their encryptions, you know, which they class as terrorists for starters, you know. It's another thing, you know. Like, you know how they talk about this group called Anominus. Apparently they're hackers and not generally what I know about them or what I've heard about them. You know, that's, you know I mean, that's already hypocritical. But as I said, you know, the thing, the suspicious thing about this Sony America thing, and I don't know if it's the gullibility that they put into people's brains generally, you know, they make people believe everything they say, but you've got to ask yourself, first of all, why did they kick up a big stink about this thing known as Sony, which everyone, even me, thought is just like an electric company, you know, like make electric products, you know, PlayStations, just TVs and that, you know, in their systems, you would assume they wouldn't have anything to do, you know, with uh, serious stuff and that, you know, you know, like uh, any like secret documents, you just think it was just like uh, financial income and all that stuff, you know, and the details about their products and nothing serious secret, which needs to be hacked into, you know, you would ask yourself why didn't they if they did, or were being accused of it, why didn't they hack NSA, CIA, anyone like that, you know, Pentagon or whatever it is, you know, if they if they were looking for information, Sony, you've got to ask yourself that and wonder why, so for starters, right? So, you know, that just makes it more suspicious for starters, man. Obviously, they were attacked because this Sony America obviously is carrying vital information important to, uh, you know, like a... Uh, King John Young, whoever it was in, if North Korea themselves, if it's true they did it. As I said, it was an accusation, but you know, uh, so that's already suspicious for starters, man. You know, you've got to ask yourself that. Uh, they obviously had something, you know, something important in their system. Uh, let's just put it across like that. So yeah, you know, um, that doesn't make sense for starters. Uh, I'm just li- going along what I'm going on going along what I've got so far you know what I'm reading through uh, yeah and uh, you know this thing which you should already be able to find online as well you know in news articles you find these sources you would have heard that uh, Vladimir Putin right president of uh, Russia you know it wasn't long ago I saw that as well you know And basically, you know, this conflict, it might have been Ukraine or Syria, whatever it was, basically Vladimir Putin and President Obama, you know, they were having conflict. They were basically, you know, proper going mad at each other for this conflict, you know. Things were heating up over whatever it was. And, you know, Vladimir Putin suddenly says, 
I have evidence that you, your government, the US government, they're basically, in, they did, made that false flag operation for 9-11. And you know, all I know is what, I, you know, it was from a decent source. Uh, you know, that Obama suddenly changed his tone, he started being cooperative with him. You know, he basically calmed down, you know, basically started being friendly. You know, it, there must be a reason as if he knew that he really has evidence in 9-11, you know, that being a false flag from the US government. Or if he knew it was a rumour, if he didn't, you know, he knew he was lying, he would have just kept on going on. And you know, this connects to, from when he said it, that Edward Snowden was already taking refuge in, on Russian soil at the time. When he said this, and you know, regarding to these documents that uh, Edward Snowden uh, leaked, you know, which I believe are... Uh, were, you know, basically copied from the system onto a, whatever it was, you know, a hard drive. You know, that's telling me whatever he got, which is would have been from the NSA, because this dude was high up in there, you know, from their database. And what I'm assuming with good reason, you know, it was basically from their system, uh, satellite footage on what, who knows what else, documents, you know, that prove that, you know, the US government were part of the false flag operation basically made it an inside job you know I know satellite footage was involved you know what I, I vaguely think I saw it was something to do with Rus Russian satellite you know footage because a lot of governments have them in space but I think actually the main thing will be it would have been from a US the USA zone satellite footage in that you know and where they would have seen that you know and that makes you wonder more You know, so it makes you wonder, you know, because it basically, you know, all I'll say on that, in this uh, Edward Snowden thing, you know, basically it was, it said that he has thousands of documents, you know, and you know, to just, you know, this global surveillance program, I guarantee it's nowhere near a thousand documents, not no matter what's in it. <clears throat> and you know, the theory lies along with decent reasoning, right? You know about this thing, basically, where they, where the American government have basically put in a law to stop uh, funding Edward Snowden, American citizens. If they do, they'll be arrested, right? Some kind of charity, some kind of thing to fund something for Edward Snowden, and I believe it's something to do with these documents, something, some kind of movement. I don't know what it is. Something to fund them to expose them. And, you know, they're so desperate to stop this dude from exposing them with all this more of this information that basically, you know, I believe they've done that. You know, they've brought in a law to threaten any US citizen, you know, from funding them. And it makes you wonder why. Why are they so desperate? Why are they so desperate to stop this? You know, especially when they were saying, near enough, trying to say, oh, it's nothing serious. And, and you know, they lied a lot. You know, when it was when it was put out in the papers exposed, they denied a lot of things and they've tried acting calm about it. But, you know, the way they reacted to her basically trying to, 
convict this dude, Edward Snowden. Well, yeah, c- arrested with, uh, American citizens from, you know, if they fund and put in this law to fund this thing he's doing. You know, you've got to realise, you know, if you can imagine behind closed doors, wherever they were sitting talking about, you know, they must have been really, you know, sweat, hand sweating and stuff, you know, wherever they were, panicking that they came up with some quick solution. And it is always threatening with persecution and conviction. You know, they're always trying to bring in laws. And, you know, they've brought in this actual law. I saw it, you know. And it's, you know, it's stated from what they made. And that's what it says, you know. It's like a book of... It's like a rule statement. And it's got loads of things to say. You do this, you do that. So, you know, all I can tell you now is they obviously know, along with proving that it's not just a global surveillance program that he has... He obviously has information about the 9-11 false flag attack, you know, that's already telling you something, which is nothing to do. And you don't, as I said, he's shown, or he's said that, you know, like this uh, dude who's supposed to be ISIS, Islamic extremist group, is from those documents, he's got proof, you know, that he's actually something to do with Israel and that, you know. So it tells you that he's got a lot of more information that they don't want him to, uh, you know, they don't want him to basically expose him with. I can tell you that now, you know, just from that analysis and from what, I, you know, what I've discovered. Uh, you know, you never know what he's got about other things, man. But yeah, you know, I wouldn't be surprised mainly if that 9-11 thing but obviously you know you know as I said referring to Vladimir Putin mainly and what he said about the satellite imagery and how Obama reacted differently he started being friendly cooperating uh, you know that basically says the way he reacted that it's obviously true and he knows whatever Edward Snowden took off that system from the NSA is part of that you know a part of that stuff that he took and you can see why they were so desperate to extradite him, you know. But all I know is, you know, that dude, as I said, right, he's up where he was high up. He was basically an eight. He obviously was taught and told or knew how they, you know, how they uh, catch people and, you know, who basically exposed him, like Bradley Manning and that. But, you know, that dude obviously outsmarted him. That's why he went to countries. He went to Hong Kong and then he went to Russia as the second, uh, you know, resort because, well, I know Hong Kong and especially Russia to do with this conflict are places where, you know, he, as you can see, they, they wouldn't let, they wouldn't give him authorization to extradite him back to America to basically be in prison. So yeah, you know, the dude outsmarted him and, and you can see they're doing anything they can to try and keep him quiet or take him down. And you know they obviously know is a threat as well. Uh, so yeah, we'll just keep the basics on that one. Uh, and then we'll move on. Uh, just no. As he said, a Orwellian euphemism for cuts. For these intelligence services, it looks like a give and take relationship, a two way street, or should I say, a five way street. In Washington, I'm Ganesh Chekhan, RT.
and you know that thing uh, to do with you know to do with um, basically uh, I don't know where it came from but Edward Snowden again this dude you know he was saying something about and I think it might be to do with the Global Surveillance Programme and they're saying that there was something that someone quoted along those lines that basically you know for this surveillance thing that if you're not doing any front anything wrong you've got nothing to worry about thing as if it's another way to justify what they were doing illegally spying on people you know mate I think it was mainly aimed at their own citizens GCHQ uh, UK and NSA uh, USA you know as if you know be like to people if you're not doing anything wrong you've got nothing to worry about but you know that's not true you know I mean a lot of people out there you know would probably you know not be happy with that you know if they felt they were you know what I mean that to go around having their phones recorded being recorded everywhere they go you know it's the right you know it's the it's your right to privacy right human rights and that and all that stuff which you supposedly have and I know the UK and the USA they where you have supposedly have those rights you know to privacy mainly you know they have no right to lawfully uh you know, spying you basically, you know, unless you're doing something suspicious, you know, illegal, then they have the justifiable reason. So, you know, when it comes to that, you know, that's a breach of your rights anyway. So when they, if they were the people who come across along that, with that, if you're not doing anything wrong, you've got nothing to worry about. Ideology, or whatever it is to try and justify what they were doing, that's not right, you know. You know, it's not right, you know. As I said, some people, I think a lot of people would, you know, be pissed off, you know, thinking that their privacy rights are being taken and it's not justifiable for them to say that, you know, it's a human right thing, you know. You know, that human rights that thing what I looked up and that's basically saying, you know, like the uh, Human Rights Act uh, 1998, you know, that's there's a right to privacy thing in there you know, in there, and you know, it's basically saying, you know, uh, when everyone has the right for his, her private and family life, his, her home and correspondence, you know, private and family life, uh, home and his correspondence, that's basically, you know, they're breaching that, you know, because this dude, Edward Snowden leaked and, you know, like on your computer, if you've got a webcam or anything, you know, they're watching you, you know, without, they've been watching everyone who's got them. Even when they're turned off, they don't realise that, that they're on and they're being recorded. Everyone who's got them, UK and US especially, but a lot of other countries, you know, which didn't realise either in the world, a lot of them, you know, they were basically spying on the world, on their citizens and who else knows. You know, I know they hacked China, which means obviously they got into China's databases and, that, you know, encryptions and all that maybe put those things they're called trojans in them that basically spyware you know that's illegal already again contradictory especially for ghq uk you know where they run under the law of you know hacking which is a terrorism act uh and then two there shall be no interference by a public authority with the exercise of this right except such as in accordance with the law and as necessary in democratic society in the interest of national security, public safety, or the economic well-being of the country, for the prevention of disorder of, or crime, for the protection of health or morals, or for the protection of the rights and freedoms of others. You know, that's basically the number two Article 8, Right to Privacy, 1998 Human Rights Act, UK. That's basically saying, if you're doing something wrong, illegal, then we have the right to spy on you. Yeah, that's right. You know, I, you know, I agree with that. You know, and if it's secrets of addicts, yeah, I agree with that. You know, but you know what? You people don't realise is that you know their mobile phones. Uh, as I said, the webcams, even if the light's not on, they're being recorded with a mic, even if they turn their mic off. When people have been sitting on their laptops, computers, webcams, they've been being recorded in the USA as well, you know, without their realising, you know. And, they're, you know, this facial software, facial recognition software, even if you're innocent, you know, through those laptops, they basically scan your face, you know, and they put it on their database, even if you're not a criminal. 
and it ties in with the last video I made. You know, about especially to do with this, uh, what's starting in America as soon as it's already started. This basically the chip, these microchips, RDIF chips or whatever they are, they put into your skin. And what I put on that clip that didn't explain from that, you know, it's basically they're saying it's for, you know, like health reasons. It's another new way of health reasons. You get ill, ambulance comes along, they scan you, they know all your health history. You know, it's more sinister, and, you know, there's more to it than that. And, you know, tied in with that, basically, you know, through cameras, which they can do, all would have to put is in for the technology that might even exist. You know, if you've got those chips, they can, they would be able to scan that chip for the camera. And, you know, they're ba it's basically another right of your privacy being breached. Everyone, you know, especially America and UK, is being spied on. It's like a big brother, you know. And as I said, those ties are the surveillance, but uh, for... 49 countries well 50 countries in the world you know as I said the big brother that's watching them is Israel variant systems you do your research see where they who owns that su variant systems the people who own you know who are in control of London underground and what happened on 7-7 the people who didn't have the footage even though they were recording of these supposed four ter Muslim terrorists you know they had a big brother you know 49 countries in the world they had a big brother watching and you know these when these people well in America who will have these chips into their skin by 2017 as they're saying when they're going walking around you know what you don't realise is they'll be you know those cameras when you you go do your shopping they'll be watching you know and you know basically I think it was an Adolf Hitler quote you know something about to do with governments and that what he said himself, basically the way these governments have done it, they've taken away your rights little by little, you know, to the point that it's such in small amounts that you don't even realise, you know, you just accept every little thing and it's so subtle that, you know, people walk around not realising their rights have been taken away. Uh, you know, there's a lot behind it, you know. You know, and that's to tie in with the, you know, the breach of your apparently human rights to privacy. You got to think about that. You know, there's a lot behind that. Uh, just tying in with whatever, whatever else I've been talking about. So you know, uh, and you know, like, uh, you know, smartphone apps, and you can do your research and that. Especially Messenger, which ties in with Facebook. You know, and where Facebook quoted basically lied that they're nothing to do with it. You know, Edward Snowden mentioned them in these documents who are part of this spying program. And even more to it, this messenger app, if you've not seen what they've been saying about that, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, and if you didn't discover it, you know, that those a messenger app, but a lot of them are spyware apps, you know, but especially messenger. And, you know, a lot of people didn't realise until someone realised. You know, when you download that app it basically says it, it, that you accept to give access to the mic on your phone to the camera and every single thing contacts everything you know and that thing is just a spyware app on your phone and you know as I said man I noticed this year last year or whatever right when I used to lay in my bed at night in my room and it was quiet I could hear the mic in my phone and it was making you know like a like a sound, I could hear the sound coming from it. And basically what that was, was the mic recording. It was recording, you know, why I was sitting there. Obviously, I didn't notice that when I was playing music or if it wasn't quiet. And I don't know if anyone else would have heard that when they listened to this, if they listened. But you know, there's, it's more sinister. And that thing basically tells you everything. But as I said, yeah, if you listen to this recording and you go and check that app, You'll find out even research. There's videos of people who YouTube have uploaded showing these things. So, you know, that's basically a spyware app on your phone, you know, and it shows and proves even more from what Edward Snowden said that Facebook are part of this amongst a lot of many websites, Google, Yahoo, quite a few basically reading your emails and everything, you know. That's another breach of, uh, you know, like your human rights and privacy. So, you know, referring to if these people who made the global surveillance program justifiably said, if you're not doing anything wrong, you've got nothing to worry about. Well, the argument comes along, you know, 
well, if you're not doing anything wrong, why are you lying in the first place? And why do you need to spy me in the first place if I'm not doing anything wrong? If you don't have dirt on me. Especially UK citizens, because they could say, 1998, yeah, 1998 uh, human rights, you know, which is a law, of, again, uh, to privacy. That if I'm not doing anything wrong, I do a job. I don't do crime. Why are you spying on me? If apparently you only have the legal right to spy on me from doing anything wrong. So, you know, that's already a breach, illegal and against your human rights in the UK. You know, so that it shows they're breaking the law and you're not, you know. So, yeah, you know, there's a lot of things beyond that. Uh, just moving on from what I'm uh, reading off my screen, you know, and putting all this down, just making sure, you know, I've got everything I need just to go through it. I should be patient with me, right? Uh, you know, previously English law, I've gone through that. But uh, we'll move on to mainly GCHQ because this is more of a UK-based thing. But I don't know if American listeners listen to this. But, you know, the, this is what one thing I saw, again, from Edward Snowden. GCHQ has tools to manipulate online information. Le- leaked uh, documents showed from The Guardian, right? Oh, no, no, this is, oh, yeah, The Guardian again, which he leaked the information to. And, you know, basically he's saying they developed sophisticated tools to manipulate online polls, spam targets with SMS uh, messages, track people by impersonating spammers and monitor social media postings, according to newly published documents. Uh, By the NSA whistleblower, Edward Snowden. You know, there's a lot of things, you know, so basically... That says, you know, they can manipulate anything online, you know, using this stuff they've got. Uh, you know, when I looked at a website earlier, basically it said, you know, they're like basically <laughs> hackers, right? But they're given the authority to do it, you know, to justify, to do it, you know, by saying it's, if you're doing a crime, we can survey you. But, you know... They'll convict people like anonymous and you know, and say they're terrorists because you know, because they don't have the legal right to do it. But they're do- as seen from, you know, the breach of human rights act which they've done. That's already against the law. If you're not a criminal, they can't just defy but do it. And again, what they've done is breach the ter- uh, the terror act 2000 law again, which where it says hacking is illegal. You know, tying those two together. So, you know what I mean? That's not right for starters. And, you know, it's uh, going through other stuff, you know. Uh, other things that he leaked, right? Something to do with Gateway, the ability to artificially increase traffic to a website, Clean Sweep, which is masquerade, Facebook wall paste for individuals or entire countries, right? Uh, scrap heap challenge for perfect spoofing of emails from Blackberry tags in the past. To change outcome of online polls, Spring Bishop defines private photos of targets on Facebook. You know, there's a lot of things. This is all to do with manipulating images and that, you know, and all that stuff. So there's something that ain't right either. Why do they need to manipulate? Again, illegal of them to do. And it's just showing more and more about who they are, you know, by doing that. Uh, Another one where it says, and this is where it's saying the government of its GCHQ again views data without a warrant. You know, in law, you know, you need a warrant to do that. Again, you know, among, uh, it's saying basically, again, you know, secret surveillance on people who aren't doing crimes, where the, you know, again, the Human Rights Act 1998 says in states that only if you're doing illegal stuff they can legally spy on you and that's where they need a warrant cops always need a warrant from the court I think to do things so again that's illegal you know uh, say, it's saying on this article which I'll put in the video British intelligence services can access raw material collected in bulk by the NSA and other foreign spy agencies without a warrant the government has confirmed GCHQ secret arrangements for assessing bulk material revealed in the documents sub- submitted by the investigatory, investigatory powers tribunal, the UK surveillance watchdog in response to a joint challenge by Privacy International Liberty 
and Amnesty International, the legal action was launched in the wake of an Edward Snowden revelations published by The Guardian and other news organisations. Last year, you know, basically, and you know, time where that, you know, it's saying a lot of things already about this GCHQ. You know, they're, they're criminals, basically. They're breaking the law. You know, the government will call you a criminal for breaking the law if you do that. And so why, who the government own, GCHQ, who they employ, why aren't they, why aren't they being convicted? Why are they just defying what they did when they're showing of breaking the law, basically? You know? So you've got to ask yourself that, you know. Uh, we'll move on, right? Uh, just reading through what else I'm saying. Seeing, sorry. Uh, anything more important anything more important you know the government's submission discloses that the UK can obtain unselected mean meaning unanalyzed or raw intelligence information from overseas partners without a warrant if it was not technically feasible to obtain the communication under a warrant and if necessary and proportionate for the intelligence agencies to obtain the information. So, you know, basically, you know, without a warrant, basically they will, they can...
take that data illegally, you know, and that ain't right, you know. Uh, just seeing other things, you know. And then we'll move on to this thing what I'm seeing as well. You know, we're saying uh, basically from uh, a thing what they came down with, uh, regulation of Investigatory Powers Act, right, uh, IPA, uh, which governs much of the UK surveillance activities. This point at the GCHQ does not regard warrants as necessary in all cases is explicitly spelled out in the document in which it says one of the things within this act, RIPA, a regulation of Investigative Powers Act. Right, as saying, uh, let me go back to where it's saying, uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, re- reprint, exception warrant is not as matter of law required in all cases in which an uh, which unanalyzed intercepted communications might be sought from a foreign government. It states the rules also cover communication data sent unsolicited to the UK agencies. So, you know, that to me is saying, you know, which they need a warrant to do, and unsolicited, it's saying it's also illegal, you know, and what they're doing, you know. And when you listen to this recording, you'll start to see more. You know, that isn't right. Uh, Just reading through whatever else I see, on here which is you know important but I'll leave these documents on here you know like the uh, articles and that and the videos so you can see myself uh, there's a thing saying right uh, I see privacy in, in, in international one of several advocacy groups mount illegal challenges against GCHQ and NSA surveillance said that said the revelation should cast further doubts on legal safeguards in the UK, right? And what they're saying, we now know that the data from any call, internet search or website you visited over the past two years could be stored in GCHQ's database and analysed at will, all without a warrant to collect it in the first place, said Deputy Director Eric King. It is outrageous that the government thinks mass surveillance justified by secret arrangements that allow vast and unrestrained receipt and analysis of foreign intelligence material is lawful. You know, well, it, you know, that's what it's saying. What it's putting across is they're saying they're just defying it. They're saying, no, it's legal. We have a right. But, you know, as I said, refer back to it. I don't know the American law, but, you know, the Human Rights Act and the Terrorist Act where they're saying, you know, they're basically breaking the law and doing exactly what those against the Human Rights Act and doing exactly what they say is illegal in the terror act. So, you know, it makes sense why, you know. Uh, just seeing a lot of things, you know, there's a lot of things. I'll just go for the brief thing. But I'll move on and that uh, to what else I'm seeing, you know. Uh, just stay with me on this. And then I'll move on to uh, <coughs> what else I'm seeing, this thing, right? Another leaked thing about, you know... Um, Another leak from thing like Edward Snowden. Basically, you know what it's saying on this about spying on a GCHQ again, spying on British journalists and that, you know, snooping on them. And you know, the thing where I'm reading this, um, where's it come? Saying this RIPA thing, you know, it has been used to access journalist communications without a warrant with recent cases including police accessing the phone records of Tom Newton Dunn, the son's political editor. Over the Plebgate investigation, the call records of Mail on Sunday, reporters involved in the paper's coverage of Chris Hunt's speed in tow, are also uh, accessed in this fashion. You know, uh, basically, you know, that's again all to do with a breach of the Human Rights Act, you know, and why are they spying on journalists? you got to ask yourself that. Because, you know, especially seen from The Guardian and that, where, you know, which is, you know, one of those things and then referring, I don't know what that story is about, but why? It makes you wonder why they're accessing journalists, you know, because, you know, one of those ones was, it was a journalist for the Senate, we're saying, political journalist, you know. People like that, they're obviously, you know, they're a threat as well to exposing people because, you know, if they go and write these things and say, you know what I mean, 
they obviously know things that they want to access to make sure, you know, spine. There's a lot of uh, things, you know, more behind the story, you know, and everything to do with uh moving on man and just seeing what else uh st- stay with me on this right it should be as short as possible right uh moving on to the next article which i'll put up on the video as well and you know it's saying uh another thing uk the uk and us uh gchq nsa surveillance regime was unlawful f- for seven years it was called the global Surveillance program, what they called it, you know, uh, the regime that governs governs the sharing between Britain and the U.S. of electronic communications in, intercepted in bulk was unlawful until last year. A secret of UK tribunal has ruled, you know, uh, investigate the investigate investigatory Paris tribunal right declared on Friday that regulations covering access by Britain's GCHQ to emails and phone records intercepted by the US National Security Agency, NSA, breached human rights laws, you know. So that's saying both countries' human rights laws were breached, you know, and this is from people who are investigating it was a secret, secret of UK tribunal. You know, obviously people who know more about it, you know, basically like a law thing, you know, like, I don't know, like, I don't know what that thing is, but it's something to do with court, you know, so, you know, even they're saying it, you know, and this is why, which they'll go on along more about, you know, Edward Snowden and that when it comes to it, and, you know, after I've gone through, <coughs> gone through this, man, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that ain't adding up, you know, from what people have been, you know, what, how, how it's been put across for the media, you know, I might have been saying that they had the right to do it. You know, it's you know, it's contradicting what I said in that. Uh you know, there's a thing what well, again what I put up to do with uh footage released the Guardian editors destroying Snowden hard drives and that. You know I'm I'm not sure about what it is and I won't go into that, but I'll leave the article one there. But you know, obviously when that dude gave him copies, I'd assume, not the actual official documents, but copies of the documents, I'd assume, they obviously destroyed it for a reason. I don't know why. Maybe they knew someone was coming for him, you know, and they didn't want them to take it back, you know. But, you know, there's a lot of things behind it. And, you know, uh, I was saying this earlier, I can't remember if, I was, if I've said this in the recording, I've gone for the GCHQ thing anyway now, but uh, NSA thing and all that. But you know, basically, you know, to do with the North Korea thing, where they were saying about Sony and that kicking up a stink, saying North Korea, you're bad and that, you know, you're criminals for doing that. You know, it's a bit hypocritical now, tying back into what I've been talking about. You know about. Uh, you know how they're saying it's justifiable for them to do what they were, what North Korea they're saying North Korea did to their Sony was criminal act, but now they're saying what they were doing not just to you know the UK and US, but doing to a lot of the world illegal hacking basically take human rights illegal as I've said is justifiable. You know how come that's justifiable? Because you know what North Korea did and what they're being accused of. You know. You know, it's basically what they were doing. There's no other way of doing it. There's no other way to say it. But it tells me more, you know, this is the even more thing about it. You know, basically North Korea weren't doing what they were doing in the first place. North Korea weren't even using this global surveillance program illegally spying on its own country and a lot of countries in the world. North Korea did it for a reason. They hacked Sony for a reason, you know. Uh, so, you know, they did it for a reason, you know, and they, had, well, even if they were found out or whatever, they weren't doing it to the world without the world not realising, you know. Unlike the NSA GCHQ, it said we're doing it for seven years without people's knowledge until this dude, uh, Edward Snowden, the whistleblower, you know, went and leaked all this information. And I go back to this thing. You know about uh, about him being portrayed as a traitor by corporate media and that, to the US and even in UK papers and who knows elsewhere. 
you know, this is what I'm talking about, right? You know, basically, it doesn't make sense, you know, especially when you put it across. Basically, the way I see it, as I said, the deception a lot of soldiers are given, who end up shutting a lot as well. It's just the same as, you know, Secret Service, man. You know, a lot of people, obviously, like this dude, Edward Snowden, when he started at the bottom, you know, probably CIA, where, where I believe he started, and where he clung to NSA, you know, he was obviously told a different thing to it. He was obviously told, oh, you're helping the country, you know, you're serving, you know, you're protecting the civilians of the USA, the women, children, the men and that, you know, you make, you're protecting our country. And, you know, obviously there's a reason why that dude, you know, why that dude did what he did. As I said, let's just say, yeah, the salary that he had and that, you know, as I said, he had a place in Hawaii and all that stuff, apparently. You know, it was obviously a decent salary. And this dude obviously sacrificed that to, you know, go on the run for a reason to take refuge in Russia. Because, as I said, obviously morally that dude said and what he discovered, as I said, it seems he has more information, not just about illegal spying, but, you know, surveillance from, to say that 9-11 was an inside job is said about the uh, this dude who's the ISIS leader is actually an actor uh, who's involved with Israel putting on a front of some kind of Islamic uh, organisation made up front, which it's been leaked to do with the CIA as well, you know. You know, obviously this dude saw a lot of bad things, especially 9-11, and you can put that across, you know, this is me working it out, that, you know, you know, especially the 9-11 thing, it, it seems he has the footage to prove that. This dude obviously seen as he must have thought he was being a patriot and protecting his country, obviously saw that 9-11 thing and said, shit, you know what I mean? This thing that obviously shocked me, like most two main people in the world. Don't mind Saul in, in saw New York and that things happened, that, you know, that's wrong. And that's probably one of the main things why I did it. So, you know what I mean? Sometimes you've uh, got to, you know, sometimes people, you know, as I said... It really is true, you know, the gullibleness of people, have, how it's been slowly been led through the media, you know, have been led on that they don't use that critical thinking for themselves. It's basically, you know, basically put, you know, like when I saw in that article, Daily Mail, traitor Edward Snowden, this traitor, traitor, people are like basically listening, they're saying, we're telling you as a traitor, you know, listen to our opinion, don't take your own opinion, don't use critical thinking. And it's the same to do in mainstream media. All I do, I don't, you know what I mean? I'm not biased in that. I look at things from both sides, man. But you know, when it comes to, from what I've learned from mainstream media, basically, and how it works, it's based on opinion. It's not based used in critical thinking. It's journalists on those things, mainstream news mainly. You know, they don't, they don't actually do critical thinking. They just say, you know, they basically say, this is this, this is that, this is what we're telling you. Accept it, and people do. And, you know, I look at them from a non-biased view, and I always look at both sides, you know, like a court case. And that's why I look at it like this. And, you know, what is coming out as, what is coming out as, you know, that, well, what I've been talking about, this, you know, this GCHQ... NSA thing is more sinister than it seems, man. So, you know, uh, just going across this, just seeing if I've covered everything before I move on and, you know, uh, you know, there's a lot of things. It's basically this global surveillance program thing, which was leaked what it was called, you know, like their code name or whatever they called it for what this thing they were doing. Global surveillance, it says a lot already. Uh, you know, which is when NSA global surveillance, you know, basically, as I said, man, they're, they're you know, they're basically uh, spying, illegally spying, global being the word, and a lot of the world, who knows, maybe the whole world, man, but as I said, you know, if they didn't give permission to those countries they're spying on, obviously, they can be, you know, I don't know how it goes with a world, you know, like a court case in, involving, you know, like, other countries but they could be convicted for that you know they should be sent to court the people who run those countries and anyone who was doing it involved in, in the NSA and anyone they should be sent to a court you know and convicted and imprisoned for that you know for starters and as I said you know mainly China who, where it was discovered they were doing as I said mainly China you know 
they were illegally spying on them, man. You know, that's basically hacking for their systems. Because I recall seeing something to do with basically China blocked off, you know, whatever they call encryptions or whatever. So no foreign country, you know, especially US, especially the US, you know, can't access their systems or even, you know, survey them without their permission or if they let them, you know, basically if they grant them permission. So therefore, that's even more illegal. And that's just proof of one country that they hacked, you know, it is basically what they did. They hacked their systems, you know, like their telecommunications and all that, you know, like internet and that. So they could spy on China's citizens, who knows, maybe even access their government files and stuff like that, you know. There's a lot of things beyond that. So, you know, I'm just going to keep it as brief as possible, this recording. I just want to give a bit of uh, insight into this thing so people who listen to this, they can see... You know, there's a lot behind it. Uh, I'm just trying to keep on track and make sure I get everything recorded before I finish this. But, you know, uh, that's another thing you should research, right? Um, you know, like phone apps. And it ain't, it, it, it's not just uh, Messenger, right, which does this, you know. Uh, there's a lot of apps out there on your phones that you download. And, you know, there's a lot behind this thing, you know, why they have GPS location on them and a lot of things like that, for starters, you know, where it comes along with technology, you know, it's just that front that's put across on you, you know, they say, ah, smartphones are new technology and people, are, you know, used for that thing where they don't realise the full story behind it, like this IDIF chip thing, which is already happening in America, you know, they say it's for this, but there's a lot more behind it they don't tell you. You know, and it's just like smartphones, you know, GPS location. The way I see they put that front across is so you can use it. And maybe that you can. Again, the same thing with the RDF chip is for health reasons, but there's more behind them. You can just use it for, you know, the map location things when you're lost in a city or whatever. You need to get directions like a sat thing, you know, because again, GPS, right, that, you know, that comes from a satellite. And that basically is another way of tracking people without realising it, you know. That's like spying on people, you know. And, you know, you know, especially with this Messenger app where it says that you have to uh, share your location when you download this app, you know. And where Facebook lied and said, no, we're not spying and it's all lies. Even though it says when you download that app, it basically says you have to allow access. And they're saying, nah, it's not that, it's, you know, it's not right, man, you know. Um, so, yeah, you know, same as the messenger app where it's recording you when you don't know. So, yeah, you know, there's a lot of things behind that. And people don't realise it, you know. So, you know, you've got to do your own research when, you come, when it comes to this stuff. You know, this is just me using the abilities I was given, you know. Uh, you know, what I was born with and that, you know based on the conspiracy about who I am and that and the stuff behind that. You know, these are just things, natural things in my genes, I believe. But, you know, there's a lot of things behind it that people don't realise. So, you know, I've just kept to try try to keep this video as brief as possible. But, you know, always do your research. I'll leave what I've, the articles have found and that, you know, to put along what uh, this dude, Edward Snowden's leaked in that through The Guardian and that. And, uh, you know, you just have to do your own research and find these things out yourself because, you know, there's a lot of things beyond what you don't know. A lot of things. Uh, you know, as I said, uh, you know, with, uh, again, referring to this blacklisting thing, you know, you can research that, basically type in suspicious deaths, uh, ex-secret service or whatever if you go on Google or cover-ups and that, or things like that, yeah. And all I remember seeing, you know, as I said, it basically what do you call blacklisting, where anyone who goes in the room and that, you know, from the Secret Service and it tries to expose them, that's what they do. And as I said, it was two dudes, as far as I remember, who went on the run, you know, and they thought they were, I think they must have thought they were escaped. They went into a bar or something, just, to, you know, to have a drink and that, and basically they'd been spiked and that. And, uh, you know, with poison. And they died in that. And, you know, that was a cover-up. And, again, leaked information. You know, when it comes to this thing, this is what I had. You know, uh, 
I've heard it, you know, like in a G unit track, t- Tony Yeo saying it on his track, uh, Bad News, I think, is in basically he's talking about crime, but you know, in, in on the streets, and he's basically saying, you know, you, you never leave traces and leave evidence. Well, we can refer to this, which is still crime with 9 11 and why there's things been revealed, because you know, when you do, when you obviously lie, or you try to cover up things, things get leaked, you know. Seeing no to those videos, uh, 9-11-7-7, ripple effect and all that, what I put up, you know, things get leaked, you know, and that's where they make mistakes, you know, so there's a lot of things, you know, uh, to do with that. And I just don't get, you know, as I said, I just don't get uh, why a lot of people in the world are still asleep, because, you know, I feel I haven't even woke up a lot of people, and people are so, I don't know, closed-minded maybe. I don't know if a lot of people have woken up, as I said, but, you know, I don't think enough have, and, you know, I don't get it. Because, you know, when people say you got to see it to believe it, I feel them on a lot of things. But, you know, as I said, what I was saying, you know, that Vladimir Putin is saying, which I believe for Edward Snowden, what he took from the NSA, that he's got surveillance, you know, secret satellite image, which I believe is from American government, where it was leaked for their documents, of uh, proof, and who knows what more, that the American government, like Bush administration, and that were part of this inside job false flag operation. And, you know, I'm thinking based on, you know, not enough people are asleep, that if this do, you know, Vladimir Putin, if he leaks this information and shows it to the world, it will prevent what we're calling World War Three, and everything I've said, what happens that happens after that, basically a world martial law, if Russia and China and that lose, you know, and, uh, you know, what happens after that, people being dictated to, rights being taken away, basically, you know, it could prevent this, and the war itself, soldiers and that, you know, um, soldiers who are mums and dads, and all that from dying in these wars, you know what I mean, because they're being, they're being told it's for good will, they're being deceived, it could prevent a lot of bad stuff if Vladimir Putin leaks this, all this information exposes him, you know, and says this. You know, it'll prevent a lot because based on those people who are sceptical, it would basically call people like me, David Icke, and, you know, conspiracy nuts or they're or in a more kind of way if you can't prove it, we don't believe it. Well, if Vladimir Putin, you know, reveals the secret information, where well, this information... You know, with you know footage, and who else knows what? You know what Edward Snowden leaks. Well, that's something they can see to make them realise it's the truth. And what will leave from there is they will realise the people they were can call in conspiracy nuts from nine eleven, who were talking about the seven seven stuff and everything that's happened in Madrid. All of those, you know, to Sydney and uh, Paris and all these things, what have been called false flag operations. You know, just from seeing that, they'll know everything else was an inside job. And, you know, they'll they'll wake up and see the truth and everything else that's been talked about. You know, and basically they'll stand up for themselves, wake up and say, look, what you're doing to us is wrong, you know, and we're not going to let you do this, you know. Especially when, in a lot of these countries, especially UK and US, where apparently democracy exists in that, but obviously it doesn't. You know, people are still led to believe that, you know, they basically, their their government listens to them and that when they don't. So, yeah, you know, it would wake up a lot of people and it would change things, you know, if a lot of people realised that was the truth. You know, I just try and put this in videos and that, and then hopefully people can share this, you know, and put it across to other people, you know, until they wake up. All I will say on the, in the end of this uh recording is the one what I said about the forensic evidence and stuff about 9-11 and 7-7 and stuff to do with this ISIS and the connections to Israel that one needs to be shared the most to those sceptics you know what because as I said Vladimir Putin hasn't released this evidence he's got so you know that thing to those sceptics those sceptics who you know who basically must go on until I see it I won't believe it you know they can't argue against that video Because, you know, that is proof from, you know, experts, demolition experts, you know, who know how buildings, when their controlled demolition come down, who noticed it was controlled demolition when they come down. 
as I said, the architects who basically said, you know, those planes hitting the towers is like a, you know, like a, a fly net in your kitchen, right, and flies going into it, you know, basically that's what those planes would have been like effectively on the World Towers, you know, the tr- World Trade Center, it wouldn't have done nothing to him in the first place. Uh, you know, even the architect himself who made it said, you know, a multiple amount of planes, probably bigger than the planes that hit the towers or the same size could have hit the towers and they wouldn't came down. He made it and so, you know, you know, there's a lot of things and you know, like the forensic, a media forensic expert who uh, analysed those ISIS beheading videos and that to be fake, you know, like the camera angles and the, you know, how the, how it's showing, no, not the camera angles, it's saying like it's basically a studio footage, you know, uh, basically it's showing that uh, the Japanese hostages, it's showing there's light coming from three different directions for starters, cast shadows. Which basically says, you know, anyone knows the sun only casts one shadow. So it already proves, you know, that there was more lights. You know, there's a lot of things, uh, the ISIS thing and that beyond that. I uh, can't remember what came across as that. All I know is Edward Snowden has already leaked documents to prove that. But, you know, there's a lot of things. Yeah, well, basically the ISIS connection where they're saying that Jihad John or whatever. You know, he was supposedly this and that, you know. So, you know, that video has a lot of forensic proof where the sceptics can argue against for starters. Uh, just thinking of anything else. And all I will leave this with, based on this ISIS thing, and what I said on the first recording I made, a couple of points you've got to ask yourself for starters. Uh, we'll start off with, you know, yeah, there is, you know, where it comes along, well, it's seen that it's an ISIS group, even though they've been leaked to be CIA invented. Yeah, there's a lot of extremists, there's a lot of dudes, you know, dressed in that. But the thing you've got to realise is the CIA who implanted this fake uh, terrorist organisation or whatever it is, anti-Western movement in the Middle East. And, that, you know, basically they got this dude who's a, basically an actor, a fake, you know, Israel Mossad agent, you know, to go to the Middle East and to uh, Syria and that and say... You know, I'm the leader of this thing. Do you want to join? And basically, Muslim extremists in Syria, the people who are extremists, were led to believe that he is as much as the rest of the world for the media thought he really is, you know. And so they they joined. That's the only <coughs> simple way to put it, you know. So, you know, whoever's, you know, him, this person who's playing the leader of ISIS, who's actually a Mossad agent, and anyone else who's part of this fake uh, ISIS movement knows what it's about but those Muslim extremist men in that thing actually think that you know they're part of a movement but they don't realise you know same as that video where uh, I think it's a senator or something or whatever he is and that other video where he actually admits that you know he's part of uh, the US government he admits you know that uh, they are working with ISIS they're basically funding and they actually made them up so you know, and then as I said, something else I was going to think of to do with this uh, ISIS, which slipped my mind, which is why I said the, f- of the first thing. That, you know, there's a lot of things behind it, you know. And, you know, again, as I said, uh, you know, on this, uh, you'll see the photo, you might have seen it, where this supposed leader of ISIS, you know, is wearing a, a jewellery and that. And as I said, he's supposedly a Muslim as well. And all I know is, what I know is Muslims, the Muslim religion, you, you don't wear jewellery. And again, you know, I said this in the first video, and this is another question you've got to ask. You know, they're saying they're mainly against Israel, you know. They're actually mainly anti-Israel, but mainly anti-West. And, you know, you've got to ask yourself, you know, they're in Syria, it's just very right close to Israel. And yet, you know, they're attacking everyone else, but why aren't they attacking Israel? Especially, you know, the connection with the Middle East, Palestine, and, you know, the Muslim population of Palestine who are being victimised by Israel. Why aren't they going in it? Why, you've got to ask yourself, why aren't they attacking Israel? Because, you know, Israel is on, their, on that continent in the Middle East. They're not in the West America on the other side of the ocean, and yet they, they aren't attacking, you know, where they could. You know, it makes it more obvious with even though, and this is what Edwin Snowden has leaked with his information, you know, that it, this ISIS leader is actually a Mossad agent and that has been leaked, you know. So you've got to ask yourself these things, you know. 
there's a lot of more things and I hope this recording you know makes more people wake up with everything I've been sharing you know there's a lot of things behind it and you know it gets scarier and scarier when you discover it so uh, that's all I was saying this so try and keep it short and uh, so if you watch this video and you follow me on it then just share it and you know wake more people up so more people see the truth cheers for listening mate shining out Let me tell you why you're here. You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain, you can't explain you can't but you feel it. You, feel it. you felt it your felt entire life. That there's something wrong there's something wrong. You don't know what it is, know what it but, is. It's there. Know but it's there. Like a splinter like in your mind. Your mind. Driving you mad. Driving. Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you want to know what it is? It is. When you go to church, when you, go to church, when you, pay, your taxes, when you pay your taxes, it is the world, is the world that has been pulled, over, has your been pulled, been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. That you are, that a, you slave are a slave like everyone like else you were born into bondage, born into a prison, that you, a prison that you cannot smell or taste or touch. A prison, a prison for your mind. For your mind. We have survived we by have hiding survived from by them, hiding by, from running them. Running. by running from them. But they are the gatekeepers. They are the gatekeepers. They are the Where they have failed, they have failed you, will they have failed. you will succeed. Why? They will, they will never be as strong or as fast as you can. What are you trying to tell me? Are you trying to tell me? Are you trying to tell me? That I can dodge bullets? Dodge bullets? Dodge bullets? No, Neo. No, Neo. No, Neo. I'm trying to tell you that when you're ready, when you're ready, when you're ready. You won't have to. You won't have to. You won't have to. I know you're out there. I can feel you now. I know that you're afraid. I don't know the future. I didn't come here to tell you how this is going to end. I came here to tell you how it's going to begin. I'm going to hang up this phone. And then I'm going to show these people what you don't want them to see. I'm going to show them a world. A world without rules and controls. Where we go from there is a choice I leave to you. You like watching him? Don't be ridiculous. We're gonna kill him. You understand that? Morpheus believes he is the one. Do you? It doesn't matter what I believe. You don't, do you? Did you hear that? Hear what? Are you sure this line is clean? Yeah, of course I'm sure. I better go.